was he was asking if there was if they were going to eliminate all of adult age health. I mean, if they're going to eliminate all of IHSS and just move everybody to nursing homes. No. And no. Not as long as we're still fighting. They cut. Cuts, cuts. They're just reducing. They want to reduce the services. Again, 20% cut to IHSS, and they eliminated adult day health care programs. Is grandma going to be on the street? You know, you, uh, uh, people in wheelchairs, they're not getting the services they need. Boy, you could, if we could get somebody to provide, provide for the city, it would embarrass the hell out of them. I think this is a good time to put all the politicians up against a wall. Which side are you on? And a lot of these politicians will not say anything one way or the other, or we, they sympathize with us, but however, what have you, and we have to make very clear that we're not going to support any politician, we're going to oppose any politician who advocates cuts. Uh, also, I think we should make an issue that what they seem to be doing in adult day care, health care is privatizing. Yes. And privatization is the new yeah. neoliberal model, you know, where they're going to privatize, put everything, in, send it out to private uh, companies, whether they're privatizing in jails, privatizing everything, and I think we should demand that the unions take a position on this. They can't just stand aside. You know, the questions coming up here are very important, and they're affecting all of us right now. But what I'd like to say is if we can get Social Security to survive, I'm thinking they of the future. Is there a possible way to have something so the government cannot borrow money from it? Because that's why we're in this mess. They borrowed the trillion dollars, and we're here, and we've lost our money. So is there a way, if we survive the Social Security, to do something so the government cannot touch it? Now you have 1355 again to become a senior house after making a 50. Let's ask, demand that the supervisors require both the mayor's office on housing and the mayor's office on disability send all this to the mayor's office on housing, uh, send it to the mayor's office on disability and Department of Aging and Adult Services whenever there's a lottery or whenever there's senior or disabled or below market rate units for anybody, as well as for seniors and people with disabilities, have those agencies get the notice so they become one source of information that you don't have to read all the papers and go through that small print type. Talk about it. Okay, so this is, well, these are all so solutions. These are all solutions. So when you look at number one, shelter beds and quality of care, I think one of the things, one of the ways of solving some of that would be to uh, reevaluate the Care Not Cash program. And include seniors and disabled in it. Yeah. Right. Right. Cash not, that's what Care Not Cash does. People come into shelters and they're out into housing. And I'm looking at them and they're younger yeah. and they're on GA and all that. And they have GA beds in the shelters and they keep them there and they can keep those beds from now to doomsday. But, but the problem is that they're not, not they're not keeping people in housing permanently. What they're doing is putting people in housing temporarily. A lot of those people get evicted from that housing because they come into my office. We see them all the time. So there's a scam going on too, where they're saying, okay, we're holding all these beds for people with GA, and we're going to put them into these hotels, sometimes into substandard hotel rooms, and then we're going to evict them. When we need those, when we need those rooms, because there's more people who need rooms, we're going to throw those people out and bring in more people. So you're just creating this revolving door. That's what we've seen over the last few years. So care not cash is problematic. It's not the model. The model is we put seniors in beds with the commitment on the part of the city that those people do not stay more than 90 days because they get put into permanently affordable housing. That's got to be the package. It's shelter beds because there's an emergency and they need housing into housing. Okay, that works. That's the city's got to commit to that. That's got to be the commitment. It's got to be a two-step thing. Because I don't want to see seniors stuck in shelter beds forever. I don't want them to die in shelter beds. I want seniors to be in their own homes. And the city can do it. We can do it. But we have to force them to do it. Are we going to say, Joyce? I had a brainstorm which might not work, but I'm throwing it out.
but by myself. Um, I want to work, but then there's so many people without jobs. There are these empty buildings right. who need right. building up. So we mentioned the Habitat for Humanity. Right. Can we get yes. funds to get the unemployed to right. work on the uh, buildings that need to be upgraded and retrofitted and whatever? Give them money and build those houses for seniors. Uh, shelters. Right. You got no, people working. You that's need. Housing. You got. You could have families right. put yeah. funds from HUD and well, make ha more people have exactly. working and and also mm. use the seniors as yeah. some of the people to oh, do the work. To do some work. Okay. I'm tired of this idea that seniors are supposed to just sit here and die and play bingo and read the paper. Yeah. You understand? I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. They do it in all the community places now. 